Sinkin' Stanley. I almost said Stinkin' Stanley. <laughs> it's, it's a fun name. Uh, Jeff Scott Soto here, um, doing the cameo that you hired me for, for you. It says, from you, for you. So uh, we're going to address something here that you've asked me to uh, load in my own opinion. We're here to talk about how many artists are lip syncing these days using excessive backing tracks. And uh, yeah, you know what? It's It really is a controversial issue at the moment. And it's really strange that people are paying attention to it now more so than ever when there were way more bands doing it back in the 80s, especially when I was uh, doing my stuff. We actually used a, a lot of backing tracks with eyes. For instance, um, nobody in the band actually had decent enough voices. And when I used to record those backing vocals, I mean, I, it was like 30, 40 tracks of backing vocals. And then you get these guys just kind of barely sputtering them out. The, the, the songs just sounded horrible without them. So we were doing all that stuff back then as well, just using for the backing vocals. I never use them for lead vocals. And, uh, and I do understand there are a lot of bands that can't quite cut it, and so they use them, but there's also a lot of bands that uh, feel like they want to give the audience a little more of the experience of what they're expecting to hear if they can't quite sound like they're, they're used to being them heard. And I, to this day, still use backing tracks, but I use them mainly for keyboard things or any like horns or special effects or especially uh, drum loops and tracks like that that kind of add and uh, elaborate on the actual songs. There have been times where we're rehearsing for a tour doing particular songs that have a lot of that stuff and it just sounds empty. It just sounds like an empty shell. You, it's like just having like the, it's having like a, a Lamborghini car without the wheels and the steering wheel and everything. It's just a shell. So until you put all the bells and whistles in and I, I don't like to use it where it's abrasive and too loud. I like to just kind of accentuate the song so it's, you kind of feel the song moving along without it missing all those uh, all those pieces that you expect to hear. And if it were up to me, I mean, I would love to be afforded the, the uh, luxury of going out with a 30-piece band, a bunch of background singers and string sections and keyboard players and extra guitar players, but obviously you can't. You, uh, you, you can only do what you, what you can do and uh, an artist at my level, you know, we go out with three or four or five of us out there and we do the best we can. So I, I do like to kind of accentuate the tracks a little bit with these uh, these kind of missing pieces that we can't do live that we do in the studio. So I don't really, I'm not against it. I, I know there are a lot of bands that are against it, they'll never do it. But then there are bands that kind of need it to, to kind of get through their sets. So I'm kind of in the middle. I, I agree, it's always best to be your, as good as you could be a band like Queen. They had massive overdubs on all their songs, on every single song that they ever did back in the day. But they found a way to kind of manipulate it and Queen were kind of two different machines. The live machine was totally different than the studio machine. And you accepted it. You didn't go to a show disappointed going, oh, they were, where's all those big luscious backing, backing vo vocals and, and all the guitar harmonies that Brian May was doing. You don't really miss all of that when, you, when they were able to kind of find a way to get through the songs without all that stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of a, it's a personal opinion thing. I personally am not against it. I'm against it if you're going up there and lip syncing an entire sh concert and not singing anything. You're going up there basically saying, you know, you're going to Britney Spears the whole show. It's kind of, which again, when you have someone like Britney Spears, she's more doing a show. There's more of the, the movement, the dancing and all that stuff. It's almost impossible to be able to sing and do all of that. So she's more, and a lot of artists are more about the actual visual more than they are about how great they sound or how bad they might sound doing all that stuff. So that's my personal opinion on it. I'm not against it. I use it for my, my, my own little bits and pieces. And, uh, but I would never, ever use backing tracks or, or you know, just uh, like a vocal track to actually fake the fact that I'm not singing. That's, that I'm totally against. I won't do that. I, I'd rather retire before I get to that. And your final message here says, by the way, love your vocals on the Saigon Kick material. Thanks. That was so long ago. It's unbelievable. Jason and I were just talking about that the other day, how it's been 30 plus years since I sang background on that first Saigon Kick record. But it's really funny how when you hear those particular songs that I sang background on, you hear my voice loud and clear, even though I'm blended with all the other guys. It's, it's amazing how my voice just kind of cuts through there. And uh, that's a beautiful thing about having your own kind of stamp when it comes to singing and playing guitar and playing keys or being a musician. All the best to you. I hope you got something out of my answer. And uh, 
See you soon. I'll see the light.